Hello, my name is Riley Mitchell, and I'm a student in the MCC Honors College. In my research, I analyzed Kendrick Lamar's breakthrough album, Good Kid, Mad City. Specifically, I analyzed the interplay and tension between the themes of God and faith and the more profane elements on the album, uh, which Lamar expresses through his de developmental techniques throughout, and I will then explain hip hop's role in easing the tension between faith and the profane. First, I will lay out what has already been researched in Lamar's work and hip hop in general in order to establish a loose framework for our discussion. Then I'll summarize the album's narrative, and then I'll dissect two songs to illustrate how Lamar develops the tension between faith and the profane. And finally, I'll explain hip hop's unique role in easing the tension. In my paper, in my research paper, I go through each song, but we only have time to briefly analyze two of them right now. We will move pretty quick through the next few sections. So if you want to pause it to look at any of the slides, feel free to do so. On April 16th, 2018, Kendrick Lamar's fourth studio album, Damn, won the Pulitzer Prize for Music, becoming the first non-classical or jazz piece of music to win the award. Dana Kennedy, who was the administrator of the Pulitzer Prize, commended Lamar, stating, it shines a light on hip hop in a completely different way. This is a big moment for hip hop music, end quote. That, that it was, but already in the last decade, more people have begun incorporating hip hop, especially Lamar's work, into academic studies and coursework. The podcast Dissect has brought formal analysis of hip hop to a large multimedia platforms, including Spotify, and was actually the inspiration for my research. The podcast dissects music albums through form, formal song by song analysis, which is essentially what I've done in my research, but the podcast has not formally dissected Good Kid Mad City. In the last decade, people have also started incorporating hip hop, especially Lamar's work again, into academic studies and coursework. An article by Malakov and Zueva and another article by Dover and Pazdal study hip hop as literature and they implement conventional literary analysis techniques in their studies. Dover and Pazdal, along with other researchers such as Bettina Love and James Hiley, studied Lamar's album as literature and they found Kendrick Lamar's self-reflective techniques to be one of the most influential aspects on the album. Hiley claims Lamar utilizes perspective shifts in the autoethnographic method, which uses, which uses personal experience to form larger narratives about realities. And he uses this to initiate self-reflection and he argues that an array of perspectives is necessary to gain a fuller understanding of a particular context like that on Good Kid, Mad City. In interviews with Complex, The Guardian, and The New York Times, Kendrick Lamar has, com has commented on the, the use of these techniques and his themes of God and faith on the album. Alan Noble and Zachary Settle in their articles discussed the themes of God and faith and their importance on the album and their importance in Lamar's larger discography. They argue that these themes are Lamar's primary motives for making music and are integral in understanding the album which Lamar has confirmed in an interview with the New York Times. So if these themes are as integral to Kendrick Lamar's music as he says they are, then it's important to understand how they interact with the other aspects of his music, such as the literary production and self-reflective techniques. And this is where my research comes in. Lamar develops the tension between faith and the profane most prominently on these eight songs. We don't have enough time to go as in depth on all of these as I do in my paper. So I'll give a brief plot overview before discussing the interplay and tension between God, faith, and the profane in the two songs, Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe and Backseat Freestyle. The album essentially is about a day in the life of K-Dot, which is 17-year-old Kendrick Lamar, and his homeboys. The album has a delineated plot structure, so the sequence of events as presented on the album are sometimes out of order. It also contains skits and voicemails, which help move the narrative along. In the first song, Shireen, aka Master Splinter's Daughter, the album opens with a recitation of the sinner's prayer, which plants a thematic seed and gives an idea of where the album is headed. So in the song, when we meet K-Dot, who is 17-year-old Kendrick, and we meet Shireen, who is K-Dot's love interest, and they meet at a party. Then the song jumps to the middle of the album's narrative when K-Dot arrives at Shireen's house to have sex with her, but then he gets jumped by her brothers instead. The narrative begins when K-Dot's friends pick him up on backseat freestyle in the morning at his mom's house. They ride around Compton freestyling and smoking weed. Then on The Art of Peer Pressure and Money Trees, they drink and get into trouble. Then on Poetic Justice, they split up 
and K-Dot goes to Shireen's house for sex, but then he gets jumped, as we saw on Shireen, aka Master Splinter's daughter. Then him and his friends seek revenge on her brothers, which results in one of their own getting shot and killed. This forces K-Dot and his friends to confront the realities of their profane environment and their own wickedness. And in the parking lot of a Food for Less on the song Sing About Me, Dying of Thirst, an older woman sees them in their turmoil and tells them that they are dying of thirst. And she offers them holy water, and K-Dot receives Jesus as his personal savior, which changes his life forever. This sparks deep, deep, deep reflection and repentance on the song Real. And K-Dot then trans begins his transformation into Kendrick Lamar, who wrote the album. Essentially, the album ends by looping back to the beginning. K-Dot transforms into the faithful Kendrick Lamar, who made this album to give light to dark place of to a dark place of violence, Compton, and ease the tension between faith and the profane. Every song works on at least, sorry, uh, these are the songs. Every song works on at least two levels. On one level, it speaks from the perspective of K-Dot chasing his vices on the narrative level. But then on another level, it speaks from the perspective of Kendrick Lamar acting as the faithful conscience or the good kid infiltrating the mad city of K-Dot's mind and environment. The this is the reflective and transformational level. And so K-Dot does not initially perceive the second level, but he does more and more as the album progresses. The song Bitch Don't Kill My Vibe is primarily from Kendrick Lamar's perspective and does not contribute to the narrative. Lamar presents his transformed perspective early on in the album to thematically and sonically contrast it with K-Dot, which helps listeners follow the transformation throughout the album. It highlights K-Dot's problem, which is godlessness, by first showing Kendrick Lamar's idealized God-centered self. The chorus of the song reads, I am a sinner, he's probably gonna sin again. Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Things I don't understand. Sometimes I need to be alone. Bitch, don't kill my vibe. So ideally, Lamar is constantly aware of who he is and who God is. He is a sinner in need of forgiveness, and God is the only one who forgive him. It also introduces the tension. Lamar ends the musical portion of the song with a violin solo, which exemplifies the vibe that he doesn't want other people to kill. The violin ends the narrative, and sorry, the violin ends at the end of the song, and then the narrative begins with K Dot's friends picking him up in their car to freestyle and smoke weed. That's the skit at the end of the song. And then it leads to the song Backseat Freestyle, the next song on the album. So this transition highlights the main conflict, the tension between his desire to be faithful to God and and then the temptations of his profane environment. Backseat freestyle is loud and drum heavy and essentially immediately kills the vibe exemplified by the violin created on the previous song. As soon as K-Dot's friends arrive, his faith or vibe is contested and drowned out by the loud, violent beat of his environment. This concept of his environment embodying a particularly loud, violent beat recurs throughout the album. In Backseat Freestyle, K-Dot's words, Martin had a dream, Kendrick have a dream, open and close the song. And they may be heard as coming from both K-Dot and Kendrick. From K-Dot, it is an arrogant boast about his vices. He's comparing his dreams for money, power, and respect to Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream for equality. From Kendrick Lamar, it is a call to his younger self to have better dreams, to abandon his vices. He is critiquing K-Dot's dreams by contrasting them with Dr. King's dreams. He is saying essentially, Kendrick, have a dream, want better than this. It is, this is the reflective transformational voice of his faithful conscience. These are just three examples of how Lamar weaves together literary techniques and multiple pers perspectives to develop the tension between God and faith. And he does this in different and often more profound ways in each song on the album. But it is necessary to see it played out in obvious examples from the first few songs before dissecting later songs. The narrative and its themes climax on the song, Sing About Me, Die Sing About Me Dying of Thirst, which is after K-Dot and his friends retaliate and things go awry and their friend Dave is shot and killed by Shireen's brothers. In this song, K-Dot repents of the day's sin in his whole lifestyle, and then he accepts Jesus Christ as his personal savior, thus becoming Kendrick Lamar. Lamar uses hip-hop to ease the tension between God and faith and the profane. Hip hop is typically the music of violent, profane environments like Compton. It has a both faithful and profane past that uniquely situates the genre 
in the middle of the conflict's battlefield. Lamar capitalizes on the situation to use the genre to bring understanding and positivity with the holy water on Sing About Me, I'm Dying of Thirst, or no other genre can bring as effectively to the middle of the battlefield. Although the battlefield of God and the profane is everywhere, it is prominent in violent inner cities where hip hop is from and where Kendrick grew up. Hip hop is dominated by artists from these dark places of violence, such as Kendrick Lamar, and they offer insider perspectives unattainable elsewhere. Lamar presents his Christian faith as the only hope for a battlefield resident, boldly claiming that even in inner city war zones, the tension can be alleviated. Insider perspectives to the conflict, such as those presented on Good Kid Mad City, offer both hope and the opportunity for guided self-reflection, thereby easing the tension between God, faith, and the profane. Hip hop is uniquely situated in the heart of the battlefield and artists such as Kendrick Lamar have used it to ease the tension by painting it vividly and providing insider perspectives to spark self-reflection and change in, in the listeners. And that is all I have. Thank you for viewing.